Hi, so welcome back. I'm going to talk about tongue twisters today. A lot of people think tongue twisters are just a playful part of language, which they are, okay? Um, but you can learn a lot from tongue twisters as well. In fact, when I'm doing tongue twisters with the children, I like to stress to them what they're actually learning from it. So we do our what, as in we are learning to. We are learning to pronounce our vowels, pronounce our consonants. We are learning to practice articulation, practice alliteration and strengthen our speech skills. So they learn um, the different things that they're meant to be learning from tongue twisters. So um, there's a variety of different activities that you can do with tongue twisters. There's 50 cards in the junior box, there's 100 cards in the middle box and 100 cards in the senior box. Again, there's some continuity as in the short phrases that you might have in a junior box. By the time you get to the senior box, you come upon the same tongue twister again, yet it's in its first format, as in it could be five or six times longer, so make it more challenging for the pupils. Um, so one of the first activities that you can do with the younger pupils when you are teaching them their sounds, if you look through the teacher manual or look through the box of cards, you should find a tongue twister that will fit the specific sound that you're teaching and you can stretch out those sounds. So for example, um, there's one about Nile. Um, naughty, naughty, naughty. So naughty, naughty is never nice to Nile's nice neighbors and stretch out the N sound. I really should have written that tongue twister down first because I didn't even look myself. Um, but again, with other sounds, the just sound and, and so on, all the different kind of sounds, you should be able to find a tongue twister to match that. With the younger pupils, you're going to have to speak clearly, very slowly, and repeat little section by section, and they repeat after you. You can have um, short little challenges with them, as in try and say it five times, and so on. As they get older, the tongue twisters can get more um, advanced, okay? They can be longer. Um, you can link them into grammar from about eight years upwards, so they can get a grasp of adjectives, nouns, verbs, and so on. Most tongue twisters you see are based on, you know, they have the adjective, the verb, the noun, the adverb in them. So you can either create your own tongue twisters or you can take tongue twisters from the, the tops, it's in the tip of the tongue, and try and get the children to identify, okay, where's the nouns in your tongue twisters, where's the verbs, where's the adverbs. Similarly, if you're making your own tongue twister, I like to start with one with the pupils' names, so everyone can create one with their own names. Uh, so say if your name is Michael, you'd have to think of an adjective, um, the noun obviously is Michael, a verb and an adverb. So it might be something like um, um, marvellous Michael marches um, mischievously, something like that. Um, jolly, jewels, juggles, joyfully. And again, when they're younger, you might give them a helping hand, put up different uh, nouns, verbs, adverbs and, and adjectives with all beginning with different sounds. But as they get older, they can use your dictionary to find something. The children love making, creating tongue twisters about themselves. Again, it can go to a written activity then. So color code, the nouns can be all in blue, the adverbs in green and, and, and so on. Um, as well, you can have competitions with the tongue twisters, but generally um, I like to focus on the sounds and the pronunciations. You can have fun with them maybe later on in the year or, or an odd little uh, game throughout the year. Um, the, as they get older as well, the tongue twisters tend to be longer. So you can link them as well into music. Now you don't need to be great at music or be really artistically minded. Um, the children will be able to beat uh, a common beat. So just say, um, how much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? I would first admit I'm no good at tongue twisters, but the children get a beat to that. So how much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood in a chuck? I think it is. Again, they get that beat. You can add any non-tuned, the untuned percussion instruments of cymbals, tambourines, and maracas, and, and so on, and they can get the beat in there. If someone is good on drums, or that, if you have bongos, or even the table, you know, how much wood would a wood chuck chuck, or a wood chuck could chuck wood, so you can get a beat in there. And even if there's some tuned instruments, or sometimes little death spells, you've got your C or your xylophone, they could all hit C for the first beat. And then whoever's got G can hit G for the second beat. So you actually can create a little, a little song that way with, with the tongue twisters. Um, so basically, that's about it. Any 
tongue twister that you do throughout the year, I like to have a little time at the start of the year when we create our own tongue twisters, we explore and, and have fun with them. And then after that, I tend to do tongue twister of the week, or you can have call it your tongue twister Monday, or tongue twister Wednesday, and we tend to do a tongue twister each week from then on. The pupils like to take the boxes, sometimes they like to explore the other tongue twisters, create um, their own sheets, and then we put the sheets together to create little booklets of tongue twisters, or you could even call it your um, booklets of alliteration. Um, so that's basically a few ideas for tongue twisters to get you started. Looking at the new language curriculum, I find tongue twisters can fit into um, the element of understanding, so the learning outcome number four, which is sentence structure and grammar, because again, as I was saying, you've got your nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, and also um, it fits into the playful element. Okay, so you've got your element of exploring and using with the learning outcome of playful and creative use of languages. And um, so hopefully that has been of some help to you to get you started. Thank you.